All right, let's do this. Everybody, welcome back. As always, Ever Gonzalez, founder of Outlier HQ. Um, my guest today is Fatima. She is the co-founder and CEO of Quill Inc. Fatima, welcome. Thank you. Great to be here as always. Yeah, we uh, we're excited to have you. We tried this a little uh, a few days ago and uh, it didn't work out, um, but I think uh, this is going to be okay. So thank you, thank you, thank you for, for coming back. Yeah, no worries. I think Zoom is overwhelmed with the amount of people that are, are on it right now. So lots of technical issues. That's right, but uh, it's working now. So let's uh, let's get right into it. You are going to be one of the speakers uh, in our May festival. Uh, you did such a great job speaking in person at our festival in Salt Lake City that we, we decided to invite you back. Uh, you and I kind of hung out in Orlando for PodFest. We had a great time, uh, saw you in action. It was fantastic. And so I think uh, you and your session are going to bring a lot of uh, um, just a lot of knowledge, a lot of expertise uh, to those that, uh, that are going to be listening. So uh, let's dive right into it. What are you going to be talking about? Yeah. Well, you know, I think one of the biggest questions we get asked at Quill, I would say top, one of the top two questions is how do we grow our podcast audience? And I think something that often gets overlooked with marketing your podcast is marketing your own personal brand and how correctly, directly correlated it is with um, growing your audience. And so in May, the virtual summit for outliers, I'm going to be covering 10 steps to creating a killer personal brand, not just for your podcast, but also yourself. So really the whole concept of this talk is about uh, staying top of mind, staying newsworthy, marketing tactics, and enhancing not just your podcast and getting more eyeballs on your own show, but also uh, building and elevating your personal brand so that by virtue of that, you can you can continue growing your, your content audience. And now, do you think that because it's podcasting and the host um, is such a, an important role um, when it comes to, to building the brand, the podcasting brand, the company brand, uh, the personal brand, Right, that's different than, for the most part, a CEO of another company, right? Uh, you can usually build a brand around a product or a service, but now it's important for us to build our own personal brands as well in order for this to succeed. Everybody has a personal brand. It's what people are saying about you when you're not in the room. So you might as well control the narrative and the messaging. And the nature of podcasting is so intimate. Uh, you trust this host. They're influencers in a sense. You, you know, you really trust their product recommendations. And you tune in week after week to hear their show. And so uh, the more you can elevate your personal brand through different tactics, the more you're going to expand the reach of your content. So uh, I think podcasting is a really great medium to do that but you should also be amplifying that with pitching to media speaking engagements doing webinars um, writing for publications uh, there's so many different tactics that are involved that i think oftentimes a lot of people overlook and so in this talk i'm sort of creating it's almost like a guide where we're going to walk through all of the steps that are entailed and creating a really really strong personal brand what i like about this is that you've had success in another industry now, not that you're a newcomer, but this is uh, definitely a, a new direction when it comes to podcasting and what you're doing with, with Quill. And yeah. you've been doing this for what, a year, maybe a little bit longer. You're making a ton of noise right now, right? People are taking notice of what you guys are doing. Thank you, Ever. Honestly, it's you're just, you're so... You're so great to me. I feel like I should just carry you around everywhere as like my personal PM. Um, I would say that building my personal brand has been a 10, a decade game for me. Um, I started when I was 19. I'm giving away my age right now, but I started when I was 19 and um, I started doing a ton of speaking engagements and I started really like, you know, I built my entire network one handshake at a time, whether it was through, you know, TV segments or um, writing for publications, becoming a thought leader. And so that is transferable no matter what industry you go in. I, the last year, built quail which is launched quail which is the world's first marketplace for podcasters and i launched our listen in conference but i would say that all of the skills that have helped me transfer into this industry have been things that i've been working on for almost a decade so speaking engagements becoming a member of the national speakers bureau writing for our uh, publications and becoming a content writer so i would definitely say 
it's not just going to help people with their podcast. It's just going to help them with life. And no matter what industry, whether it's looking for a new job or um, hiring someone or, you know, becoming a volunteer somewhere, your network knows you for your personal brand. The stronger it is, the stronger your opportunities. And so one thing I, I really enjoy about this presentation is while I'm going to tailor it to podcasting, you can take a lot of those like real life application theories and apply it to pretty much any industry or vertical that you're in. I love it. I love it. We're, we're uh, no doubt that we're going to gain some knowledge and, uh, to be able to help us in our podcasting game. But like you mentioned, just in life in general, um, mm -hmm. no doubt that you can get that done. So let's let's kind of get a little bit personal. What has it been like transitioning into podcasting as a young uh, female, you know, uh, of color uh, into this male white dominated world a little bit? Yeah. You know, it's a definitely a very male, white dominated world. I mean, I think it's just going to get a little bit controversial, but a lot of the major players are a lot of controversial figures. And um, we see the same people on the same stages and the saying the same things over and over again. And I would like to see more diversity represented on stages and in podcasting. I think people are looking for more diverse content and shows created and hosted by women of color, women, women of color, LGBTQ and more marginalized groups. And I think that is something that we have a really long way to go. Um, it's a lot of these events that I go to, it's oftentimes the same people on the stages, like I mentioned, and it isn't very diverse. And you know, I'm trying not to get myself in trouble here. <laughs> do it, do it. I'm very intentional about my conference. And I've been very intentional about who gets the stage. It's main stage. We only have one stage at our event in LA and it's 1200 people. So everyone gets to be in front of 1200 people. And, you know, luckily, you know, we have 80% female speakers and it's not like there isn't a talent pool to choose from. There absolutely is a talent pool to choose from. The, the problem is it's almost... I feel like a bros club where the yeah. opportunities are being handed to people's friends and people aren't being intentional about giving stages to uh, people who, you know, are underrepresented. And I would have to say that a lot of people are doing a really great job at supporting underrepresented groups like Chris from Podfest. He's amazing. Uh, so much diversity at his conference in May, uh, in March. You and Ariel have been amazing with outliers. I was so impressed when I was in Salt Lake and I saw like the caliber of speakers that you had come out and how diverse everyone's backgrounds were. But I think a lot of some of the larger events really need to follow suit. Yeah, I like that. And obviously the things that you're doing with your conference, this is a great transition. Let's talk about the conference, what it's about, who should go, um, who you can have on stage. Yeah. So, you know, I think there's a lot of really great events like Outliers, like PodFest, like Podcast Movement that are supporting the indie podcasters, but there aren't a lot of events out there that are supporting uh, brands and corporate companies who are moving into podcasting. And one of the biggest requests, because, you know, Quill is a marketplace where we're objective, we connect people. So we have a lot of companies reaching out to us asking what is the ROI in podcasting? What vendors should we be working with? Um, what are some best practices? And so I was like, you know what? Let's just bring all of our clients out and do a conference that's all around supporting branded podcasts. So our speakers are a mix of corporate companies like Glassdoor, Salesforce, um, and then like Bank of America, and then industry experts like Wondery, Lipson, uh, Simplecast, Podbean. Um, and so it's a good balance of companies that have had success with podcasting and then industry experts who can talk about best practice. Liner is Sarah Koenig, who is the co-host and creator of, not co-host, co-creator and host of Serial, which of course everybody knows Serial, household name. Uh, she's amazing. I love her. She was the person who put podcasting on the map for me. And so in 2014, yeah. for a lot of people, exactly. I mean, one would argue that she has made podcasting a household name. And so um, it was a no brainer that I wanted her to come out and talk to us about uh, why she decided to choose um, podcasting as a medium to cover that first season story. And also just what her advice and best practices would be for people moving into this medium to grow their show. Um, it's also interesting because, you know, it's not like Sarah had a massive budget to create cereal and she's still um, 
came out with such a bang. So it just goes to show that just creating good content is 100% the priority. And I've been fangirling on Sarah ever since I can remember. And now this is my opportunity to sit across from her and ask her all of the questions that I've been wanting to. Like, you know, do you still think Adnan is innocent? based on all the evidence that's come out in the last couple of years and so it'll be fun good congratulations that's um this is your first conference in this space um and you're coming out swinging this is going to be something that's going to be a lot of fun it's going to be in la um we'll have information in the comment section we'll link uh uh the website for the conference here in just a bit but uh uh as we start to kind of uh you know wrap this up a little bit let's talk about uh you right now specifically you're young you're bright you could be doing anything else in the world right now why podcasting why now yeah great question i get asked this question a lot um you know i run an agency for a few years and one of the biggest requests we were getting were from companies who wanted to start podcasts and eventually i saw a gap in the market and i productized our services and i think that you know in the 1990s everybody every business had a phone number and then it became a website and then it became social media and now i think in the next five to ten years every company will either have a podcast or be advertising on one and so I moved into this space because I can see the Kager of the industry exponentially just booming. And I think that it's better to be at the beginning of a hype cycle than at the end. The people who, just like in 2007, if you were the first person on Twitter, by default, you're an influencer today because you've been on for so long. Similarly, um, I think that anyone who starts podcasting now or has in the last five to 10 years has the advantage of being first to market. And you know, you're really gonna benefit from that tenfold in the next five to 10 years. Uh, good. Uh, I'm glad. And it's funny. It's it's still, it's been around for a little while, but it's still in its baby stages. So uh, people and companies can take advantage of uh, coming in early and really dominating and, and creating their own niche, their own space totally. in it. 900,000 podcasts of which only 18% are active and 50,000 of those podcasts have been added in the last 30 days. So yeah. when we're comparing that with 1.5 billion, uh, billion websites, 600 plus million blogs, 30 million YouTube channels, like the numbers are very, very small in comparison. So anyone who tells you that podcasting is a saturated market, couldn't, that couldn't be further from the truth. Really? And People now, you're first to market, and I think brands are now starting to take note and aggressively moving into this space, and that is why I am in this industry now. And so you're positioned perfectly to be able to, to create your own category in this in this space. So congratulations. We we are grateful that you are part of our community, that you came out to speak in person in Salt Lake, that you can be doing this virtually in May. Uh, we're big supporters of you and, and the things that you're doing in the industry. Uh, we're big fans. So for those that are interested in the conference, in you, where can they find you online? Yeah, so, you know, we'll link it into the comments and everything, but um, my company website is Quillit, so Q-U-I-L-L-I-T.io. Our conference is on, on our webpage as well. My my handles for across all my channels are zadiafatima at gmail.com. That's my personal email, um, or just my, that that's my handle across all my channels. And I, yeah, I'm pretty accessible. So if you just Google my name, you'll be able to find my email. It's like pretty easy. I love it, guys. Connect with her. She's the real deal. She's doing some amazing things in the industry. Um, Fatima, this has been fun. I uh, can't wait to see you in May uh, or hear from you in May and then see you hopefully later this uh, this year in person. Yeah. And thank you so much, Ever. You've been such a huge supporter of mine ever since I joined this industry. So generous with your contacts, your connections, and your support. And I, uh, I won't forget it. I love it. Let's go. Thank you. We'll talk to you guys later. Take care. Stay safe, everyone.